Welcome to Allah's Love for Islam. My name is Stephen Dickey, the host of the program, and with me is the founder and director, Pastor Rudy Harnish. Pastor, this series has been captivating. It's been informative. And where are we going today with the understanding from the books? Today we're looking at a title called, Who is the Comforter? And uh, throughout these series, we're setting aside. We've mentioned this before. We're setting aside what scholars and what other intelligent people have said or are saying. We want to go straight to the sources. We want to go to the honored Quran. We want to go to the, the holy books of the Bible. And as a Seventh-day Adventist pastor, I believe this is very important for us to do, to go to the, the sources, uh, especially the holy books there, as we've mentioned, to get our, our information, our guidance. Today, who is the comforter? You know, on the minds of uh, many in Islam, who is the comforter is an important subject. And we invite you to come and search with us into the answers we need for these important subjects, which affects all of us today. Scholars in Islam today are even heard quoting from the Bible scriptures to say that the desert prophet, Muhammad, is the comforter. But what does the Injil say? What does the Torah say? Is the prophet Muhammad the comforter, which it speaks about in the Injil? Some intelligent scholars seem to say that it is. But what does the NGL say on this subject? So we invite you to come and explore this important question with us by going straight to the sources. But before we do this, it's absolutely necessary and expedient that we spend time asking Allah or God for guidance in prayer concerning this and every other issue which you may have that concerns our eternal salvation. So dear reader, I encourage you to, to bow with us and send our prayer to heaven. Kind God in heaven, we just thank you again. We have the opportunity, the blessing to be here. You give us life. You give us strength. You give us every breath. Our lives are in your hand. And we just invite you to be here with us, to guide us this mo through this most important subject about who the comforter is, who he is, what his work is. We ask for wisdom because we don't have any. We have to go th to the source of wisdom, who is Allah, and through his word, which he sent down. So we ask that the Holy Spirit, this comforter, which we will find out uh, later on in this subject, we invite this Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us. In the name of the Creator, amen. Amen. Searching into the holy books in a prayerful attitude will provide you know, us with the answers which we need for any question we might have that regards our eternal salvation and also regarding uh, the path we should be on on the way to the internal gardens of bliss. And I believe this is one of the reasons why the Torah and Injil were given to mankind, to inform us of the will of Allah. And somebody may ask, you know, can we trust the Torah and the Injil? Well, it says in the honored Quran, in Surah 3, 3, we go there just now, Surah chapter 3, verse 3, we are told in the honored Quran that the Torah and Injil were sent down from Allah as guidance for mankind. I mentioned previously that just like the firstborn son in a family is very important because it was the he is the firstborn. And so the Torah, I liken that to the firstborn that Allah sent down. We cannot safely set that aside. We have to pay attention to what the Torah is saying because God's ways do not change. And there in Surah 3.3 3 it says, It is He, Allah, who sent down to the step-by-step -step in truth, the book, confirming what went before it. And he sent down the law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus before this as a guide to mankind. And it continues on and it says, he sent down the criterion of judgment between right and wrong. Another verse from the Quran that I really enjoy looking at is Surah 253. And it says, remember. So obviously, uh, people have forgotten. And it reminds people, remember. We gave Moses the scripture. And is there, you know, a tradition in Islam says that this came directly from Allah to Muhammad. And he said, remember, we gave Moses the scripture and the criterion between right and wrong. There was a chance for you to be guided aright. And then again in Surah 21, 48, in the past it says, we granted to Moses the Torah and Aaron the criterion of judgment and a light and a message for those who would do right. 
So friends, if you want to do right, here it says, this is a message for those who want to do right. We've got to pay attention. There's no other criterion for right and wrong or for the judgment that is mentioned than the Torah given to Moses and Aaron. And before them, it was given to Abraham and before him to Noah and before him to Adam and Eve. And here in the Torah is written the Ten Commandments. And we go to another verse from the Honored Quran, Surah 3, 187. Remember, and it begins again with the word remember, when Allah took a covenant from those who were given the scriptures, Jews and Christians, to make it known and clear to mankind, and not to hide it, but they threw it away behind their backs. And friends, that's what we're here for today. We want to make this known, like it says here in this council. We want to make it clear. We don't want to hide it. But unfortunately, the Jews of old threw it away behind their backs. And though this council is for us today to make it known, make it clear. Friends, you just heard from the honored Quran some of these powerful verses that talk about the, the scriptures given to both the Jews and the Christians, and they were to make it known. Today, you can obtain your copy of the Bible if you are in a country that doesn't have access openly to the Word of God, the Bible. You can go there to a website. It's e-s-w-o-r-d, esord.org. Here you can freely download from the Bible to your own language and read for yourself what God wanted to make known to mankind. And here you can find out what he wanted the people in the past to make clear. And as you search, may Allah bless you abundantly. You know, intelligent scholars today will freely quote from these sources, the Torah and the Injil, and they'll try to say that it is the Prophet Muhammad that indeed was the comforter promised by Jesus, Isa al Masi. But what do the holy books say? So this is our study, who is the comforter? We go to James in the Injil, chapter 1, verse 5. If you need wisdom, he says, ask our generous God. That's what it says in James 1, 5. Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. You know, Allah will always give understanding, won't he, Stephen, if we, if we simply and humbly come before him and ask. If in sincerity we ask for guidance, it says he'll give it. So do not be afraid to ask Allah anything concerning this subject or any other subject that is dear to your heart. Ask him in private prayer to give you guidance and give you light. He will answer that because it's important to him. We go to another text in the Injil, John chapter 14, verse 16. And it says, and I, and this is uh, Jesus, Isa al Masih, who is speaking. He says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And this is one of the texts that scholars will quote from the Injil and say, this is here referring to the prophet Muhammad. So as we look at this question, is the desert prophet the comforter? Could it be that it's talking about Muhammad here? that Jesus said he would send another comforter. Intelligent scholars will quote from John chapter 14, verse 16, but the unfortunate thing is they will not quote the remaining texts which explain in greater detail who the comforter really is. So now, dear friends, you take careful note with pen and paper. You write down these texts. You go back and you look at this. Is the desert prophet the comforter? We go to John chapter 14, verse 16. We've repeated it already. And I, Jesus, will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. If this is to refer to an abiding presence, then this would not fit as all of us know that the Prophet Muhammad is not physically present with us. Every thinking Muslim knows that Muhammad, like all others, have gone before us, they've gone, he has gone to his grave. He has died and he's now buried. And these all rest in their graves. They're awaiting the resurrection. So the desert prophet cannot be with us today. And so if this is referring to an abiding presence, it could not fit him. So it couldn't be referring to him because he is not an abiding presence with us today. But as we continue in John chapter 14, verse 17, here it's called the spirit of truth, this comforter. 
It's another name for the Comforter. Whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him nor know him. But you know him, Esau said, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Here the Comforter, which is also known as the Spirit of Truth, it says the world can't receive him because it doesn't see him or know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. So the Comforter is called the Spirit of Truth, and he would dwell in us. Who is this Spirit of Truth? It is the same as the Ru Allah, the Spirit of Allah, who would be present with us forever. And it calls this Spirit of Truth the Comforter. In fact, the Spirit of Truth would dwell in us if we want him to dwell in us. Here we see the Comforter is the Spirit of Truth or the Ru Allah, this spirit would be present with us forever. So, dear friends, if you look at this and try to compare this to Muhammad, this would never work. It simply couldn't happen. If you are in doubt as to who the comforter is, we continue because it continues with more information in John chapter 14 and verse 26. There again it says, The comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said to you. So as we continue here in John chapter 14, it's the Comforter would be sent by the Father in the name of Jesus. He'll teach you all things. He'll bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said to you. So here, friends, we have in unmistakable language, the Injil tells us that the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, the scholars don't quote these verses. They just quote the certain ones. Well, that's, you know, you think about it. If Muhammad was this uh, Holy Spirit, how could he be everywhere at one time? He could only, so that, that rules out any kind of human being for that. Right. It has to be something above human because he's right. present everywhere. Right. So this is crystal clear here from the Injil that tells us that, that uh, the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. So we look at these 10 distinct points as to who the Comforter is. In the Injil, it tells us. And we go to John chapter 14. You want to write these down. John chapter 14, verses 16 through 26. John chapter 15, verse 26. And John chapter 16, verses 7 through 14. All of these from the Injil, from the Gospel of John. You write these down there, it'll, you'll find all this necessary information regarding who the Comforter is. And so we want to just review a little bit right now these 10 points. It tells us, first of all, that the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, Ru in Arabic. Number two, the Comforter will teach you all things. And you have to ask yourself a serious question. Can someone who is dead, can they possibly teach us anything other than even all things? That simply can't be. So the Comforter has to be alive. Number three, the Comforter will bring all things to your remembrance. We go to number four. The Comforter would teach what Isa el Masi, what Jesus taught, and testify of him. That's what it says there in John. And number five, the Comforter would abide, would dwell in you and with you forever. Point number six talks about the Comforter reproving the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. We continue there with point number seven. The Comforter cannot be seen nor known by the world. So that's interesting that the Comforter has to be somebody that's uh, it, it's pervasive everywhere in the world, but he can't be seen. Number eight, the Comforter guides into all truth. Number nine, the Comforter will show you things to come because he knows the future. And number 10, it says, the Comforter will glorify Esau el Masih. He will glorify Christ. Dear friends, in all of these points, you be the judge. You see if you can fit this description from the Injil and try to fit it into being Muhammad. You know, friends, when Jesus was upon earth, he had much to say about the Comforter. He said, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So here in John chapter 16, we read that Jesus said, 
the following, that he had to go away, because if he couldn't go away, the Comforter would not be able to come. But if he departed, he would send him unto you. So somehow Jesus was responsible when he went back into heaven. He was somehow responsible for sending the Comforter. And why he had to wait until that time, you know, we really don't know exactly why, but it, it had to do with Jesus returning back to heaven. Now here's another question. Were the followers of Jesus to wait for another 500 years to the time of Prophet Muhammad until the Comforter should arrive? You know, because Jesus assured, Isa al-Masih assured his followers that if he were to leave, it would be to their advantage for him to leave because he would then send the Comforter from the Father. And so we have to ask, were these followers of Isa al-Masih were these followers of Jesus to wait for another 500 years until the time of Prophet Muhammad, until the Comforter should arrive? You know, these followers of Jesus, they went through some very difficult times. They needed somebody right then and there to help them in their lives. They needed someone who could comfort them at that very time, not 500 years later. Because many people would have passed away by then. That's exactly without right. Without ever an opportunity and if that was designed to bring people to a closer walk, you have 500 years of lives of people that would have been not had that opportunity. And the judgment, that would not have been fair. Mm, that's a good point. You know, those followers of Jesus at that time, they were in dire need of someone who would be a comforter to them. If these disciples were to wait for another 500 years, they would long be rotted in their graves making this promise of Isa, of Jesus, of none effect. But dear reader, we know that the Comforter did come. And he was sent down from Allah, just as Jesus said he would. But not 500 years, friends. It was not 500 years, but 50 days. And that's found in Acts 2, 1 through 4. Yes, just 50 days later. And here's the account from the Injil, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. The day of Pentecost came. The believers all gathered in one place, it says, and then suddenly a sound came from heaven. It was like a strong wind blowing. It filled the whole house where they were sitting, and they saw something that looked like tongues of fire. The flames separated and settled on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, it says, and they began to speak in languages they had not known before. The Spirit gave them the ability to do this. So, dear friends, there it is. It was 50 days after the Passover when Isa al Masi was, was hung on those wooden bars. It was 50 days after that time when there came the descent of the Holy Spirit. This was a direct fulfillment of the promise of Jesus the Messiah, that he would send the Comforter, and he came 50 days later to fulfill that promise. Now you may have a question. How can I receive the gift of the Comforter or the Holy Spirit just like those early disciples did? Is it possible for you and I to, to receive that Holy Spirit? And friends, God or Allah has given us that answer. Yes, he has. In Acts 2.38, it says there that Peter replied, Acts 2, it says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So friends, here is the condition that is outlined in the Bible that we must repent of our sins. We must turn to God. We must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Then we're promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, today, dear friends, there's a door of mercy that's still open for you and I and for this world to allow the Spirit of God to speak to us. He is the only comforter. And Stephen, you and I both know this. That we're living in the last days of Earth's history as Seventh-day Adventists. We believe we're living in the final days of Earth's history, just ex exactly like Islam teaches that we're living in the last days. And this door of mercy will not always remain open. Someday it will shut. And we don't know how soon that will be. So today, if you hear the voice 
speaking to you, God's voice through the Holy Spirit speaking to you, do not harden your hearts. Make that decision to follow Jesus the Messiah in repenting of your sins and in baptism and in confessing your sins to God. You know, one of the things that uh, goes on today within the world of Islam is that uh, many people are receiving dreams. And the best way to know whether that is from the spirit of Satan or the Holy Spirit here from Allah is to check out the books, check out what the books are saying so you can judge that because the devil still can tempt people with dreams and thoughts and we have to have a discernment there. That's why it's so important. We, we stress so much uh, looking into the holy books, um, especially the Bible scriptures, because it's so vital. We see from past uh, sessions we've had that the honored Quran continually points back to the Torah and the NGL, just constantly points the reader back to, to search these sources and it, it says it's light, it's admonition, it's counsel from Allah, and even at one point it calls it Allah's book. And so those scholars today who are saying these, these books have been falsified or they've been changed, uh, they're actually speaking against the words of the honored Quran. Friends, long ago, Moses preached and warned the people that, that they to turn from their sins, and it was the same Holy Spirit that was working in the back in the days of Noah. And for that, we go back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. It says there, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. So there must have been a degree of the Holy Spirit that was speaking to those people back in those days, to every person. And the agent, it seems, that the Holy Spirit was using back in those days was the prophet Noah. And as he is speaking to those people, that he was trying to encourage them to break off their sins. Obviously, it was a very wicked time back in those times before the flood. Um, it seems like Moses, and, or Noah rather, and his family were the only faithful ones. There perhaps were others, but it, we don't know about them very much. But here was Noah faithfully preaching, warning those people through the Holy Spirit that they were to break off their sins. Noah warned the people to repent of their wickedness, the people that were to turn from their wickedness and enter this ark. But none of the animals, but none but the animals heeded the call. That's the unfortunate thing. And this story is also found in the honored Quran in uh, Surah 7, verse 64, as well as Surah 11, 37 through 38. And there you find in Surah 11, 37 through 38, you'll find that the people ridiculed Noah, it says in the honored Quran. Well, we know all that happened. And it was a terrible time to be alive during that time when these people were, were I'm sure they were giving Noah an incredible hard time. But the fact is that one day it was too late. And that door of mercy back then was shut. On the day the scholars of that day and those who listened to them, they became frightened as they saw the door of the ark closed. And that was actually the door of mercy to those people back then, as that door closed. And then they realized too, too late that Noah was right when they started to feel those raindrops falling. And then they knew it was too late, the door was shut. And so they gathered around the ark, banging on the door and saying, Noah, we now believe. And there you can see people were, were placing more emphasis on their gold and on their their possessions, they were so involved with the business of the day that they refused to listen to the preaching of Noah. And unfortunately, yes, Steve? One of the things that keep in mind here, the reason that uh, people will say, well, how come God didn't let them in? They were, they were, but what the issue was, they did not go by faith of believing this word was from Allah until they saw it. In other words, Allah wants us to live by faith in what we read in the word to believe it's going to happen. If we wait until it happens, then I have no faith. I'm not really believing God. In essence, that's what it is. I don't believe you, God. I don't believe it's going to happen, but show it to me first. And that, that was the issue. Those people had no faith. They did trust Noah. They did not believe his message was from God. Same thing happening today. We're told to live by faith today. And back in those far off days, those who refused to listen to the voice, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, back then the Spirit of God, which spoke through Noah, they perished in those waters. And you can see there on the screen the sad situation of those people who are out there clinging to the rocks, clinging to the trees, clinging to everything they could, 
while they saw that ark floating in safety as God was preserving and protecting it, they refused to listen to the Spirit of God. You know, today, friends, God is calling you to make a decision for him. Will you allow the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Ru'Allah, to speak to you? This is absolutely vital. And that's one of the reasons we had this message uh, just a few sessions back on health, because we want to have clear minds. And if our minds are not clear because of the foods we're eating and the things we're doing, uh, being intemperate, we cannot have that quiet time with God. And it's so important that every day we earnestly pray and have our quiet time with God to wait and listen humbly before him so that he can speak to us. I know some of the things we brought before you today is new. You've maybe never heard this before. and Maybe you're in a country that uh, forbids having the Bible. And you say, you know, where can I find this? Where can I do this research? And so we include on the screen there a free Bible download, www.e-sword.org. Here you can go and get a free Bible download in your language so that you can study it for yourself. You know, we only have a few minutes left here in this program. Stephen, is there anything else you could, you could talk to us about that you'd like to inject regarding the Holy Spirit or maybe this time when, during the time of the ark when the Spirit was speaking to those people and those refused it? One of the things I think that when anybody is in their home or in their car or on the bus or on the train or out walking, the thoughts that come into your mind come from one of two sources, mm. either come from Allah through the Holy Spirit or coming from a spirit from Ilbius, the devil. That's why it's so important, as you've been stressing, Pastor, to read, to study, because that's the judge you judge it by, not by what somebody says, but you judge by what's written, because if we can't believe what's written, then we have nothing to believe on at all. And I believe Allah has sustained His Word, that mm -hmm. we can go back to the Scriptures to find out, because they're written by the patriarchs and prophets that God has called. God moved in those people long ago, didn't he, to write these things down for our benefit, for our blessing. Friends, we're coming towards the end of a program. We highly encourage you to, to search with us, come search with us for truth as we go through these session after session on these different topics so that you, can, you and I and all of us here involved with this can become more enlightened and as we prepare for these last days of Earth's history and as we prepare for the judgment. You know, we've only got a little bit of time left. We want to ask God to, to help us. And we, we ask in prayer now, if you humbly come in with us to pray before we close this program. Father, God in heaven, we just thank you that we have this opportunity. We thank you for your care and your kindness. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is still calling to us today, still calling to us and pleading with us today like in the days of Noah. We pray that we will not steal our hearts against the spirit of truth, but we will welcome him and open the door and abide by what is written, uh, be in harmony with what is written. And we just ask that you would make it plain to us. And we ask it in the name of the Creator. Amen. Amen. Friends, until next time, we invite you to return back to the same station here. Until then, may God richly bless you.